All right, guys, Christian over at Enfit Car Stereo. Uh, today we're going to install a radio. It's this Volkswagen Beetle. Um, and I think maybe an iPod adapter. But this video is going to be for both if and. Um, anyway, so what we're going to do is a base Beetle, no steering controls. Uh, so uh, first thing we're going to do is teach you how to take out the radio. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to take a panel popper. I'll use this one for today. I can't even like this one. We'll see. Yeah, pop there. Another one there. And an another one here. All right, I know there's one more in the middle. Let's see if we can get that through here. No, we can't. All right, so we're just going to push this up. Be careful not to push on the vents. So when you... Because last thing you want to do is break a vent. Let's try it from here. Oh, I was twisting. Yeah, yeah. Just twist it. Get it up to where it touches, which is right under the, the vent that goes like this. And twist it. That's how I would do it. So this is the top this is where the clip is, right here next to this one. So it's gonna go like this. Once you get it here, you can twist it. See, so what I'm doing is going like this, using this to, to push back on, and then this to push forward on. So no no pressure on these vents. Right now that we have that out. Um, we have to do the same thing up top. Mm, that's not gonna work. Let's see. I was trying to keep it to one tool. Um, honestly, I would just grab the skinny wedge tool up here and pop it like that. See what I mean? That's just so easy. But let me see if I can do it with this one. So that way you guys don't have to buy the two tools. It's hard to get it in there. Let's try the same trick we just did. Wedge and pop. Yeah, that worked. You could do it that way. Or, like I said, the flat wedge always works better. I just sometimes I don't want to make people buy two tools if they're only going to use it once. All right, so as you can see, you got here, 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 here. All right, and then you got the one in the middle on the side. This is the big one. And then you have uh, the two on the top, and then this in the middle grabs too. You can see that. It's not a good angle, but I think you get the point. All right, next thing you're gonna do is just this plastic surround, not the whole black thing. Um, so what we're gonna do, you know what, I'm not even gonna. You can try if you want, I'm using the flat wedge. Flat wedge just goes right in there, pops right out. Just get the second tool. Once in a while, you get a stuck clip in these. There you go. Yeah, just use a flat wedge. I'm making you buy two. Or you can pop, try the flat. Well, whatever. I recommend buying both. Um, all right, so you got that. You got one. Looks like two, three, four. Looks like a clip must have fallen off. The clip falls off. No big deal. You just can grab it and put it back on. Even though I don't see this one anyway. <sighs> Alright, now um, four T20 torques, and this whole thing comes right out. Alright, now I'm back, so we got T20, let's go Torx, T-O-R-X. Now there's a bunch of screws here, make sure you only take the ones behind the metal, you see? Alright, I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Alright, now make sure all your CDs are out. Because if you tilt this in any way with a CD in there, there's a chance that it could get stuck. It doesn't happen every single time, but All right, now it comes right out. Be careful when you pull. Sometimes the, the antenna, yeah, the antenna doesn't give any leeway. Yeah, like this time. All right, so if you go over here, you see that? There's a little clip you push. You have to actually pull out. See, it goes in and out. So you're going to pull that out. Whoops, that's not what's supposed to happen, but okay. Even better. You're supposed to pull it out, and after you pull it out, squeeze it, and then it releases. But that was easy. All right, and then we got the harness on this side. There's no room on this harness to show you. Jesus. Hmm. I think they're all like this. All right, this will work. 
All right, so can you see the harness? I'm gonna have to go higher. Let me readjust the camera. All right, guys, see if this is a better angle. All right, so when you come down here, back here, I mean, uh, first of all, it'd be a good idea to put a little tape right around the front of here um, so you don't scratch up your plastic. Um, I've been doing this a long time, so I'm, I'm, I always keep my hand under it. All right, so that's it. That's how it comes out. Okay, did you see that? Let me try it again. I was so worried about the uh, think about saying about the plastic. I wasn't thinking. All right, so when you get over here, there's a little handle. You squeeze it and you pull on the handle. As you pull on the handle, it comes right out. Here, I'll show you. So pretty much, you when you squeeze these two together, you can just pull on this handle out, and as it comes out, pull on the whole thing, and it comes right out. All right, so that's how you move the radio. And uh, I forget what years he started, 11 or 12. This is a 2013 Beetle. Um, now we're gonna show you install aftermarket radio. All right guys, Christian and Enfig. Uh, show you install radio in a Beetle. Uh, this is a 2013. Uh, we already took out the radio. Next thing you're gonna do is install the frame. I'm um, gonna we'll do this in a quick hurry because the owner of this car is not happy with me because she's here about an hour longer than I told her. Um, she's a friend, so it's not craziness, but. I figured out something else in the car, so did that first. Um, four screws that held in the original radio, hold in this frame, okay? You're not gonna believe how quick this is. All right, next thing you're gonna do, you're gonna get the frame, push it into the hole, nice solid metal frame, nice solid plastic, this isn't, $10 cheap kits you get off all the other locations. All right, let me get a screwdriver. There I say German quality kit for a German car. All right, so what we're gonna do is that these little triangles back here, you're gonna bend as many as you can back to grip the cage onto the plastic. All right, today, this radio is going in for show. We're not actually, for show, for show. <laughs> we're not actually leaving the radio in, so I'm not gonna bend as many tabs as I would. I'm gonna do nice light little tabs so I can put this back in inventory and we use it for an install down the road. You know, it's a brand new kit. All right, that's good enough. All right, so now there's two parts of the harness. Um, there is the plug and play, which is an exact duplicate. There's a PMP Pio 0178. Uh, this is a Pioneer AVH X2600BT. It's last year's model. We just It's the only radio I have laying around the shop right now. Um, so this is an exact duplicate of the Pioneer harness on this end. And then on this end, all our harnesses are made to go into Blau Punk radios. Uh, so this goes from Blaupunkt to um, to whatever brand, so you know makes it a direct plug-in. So it's actually a converter. We call it plug and play because it's less confusing to call people a converter because then everyone starts asking, well, why don't you just make them direct? And whatever. So next thing you're gonna look at is the SRWH VW07NS. This car does not have steering controls. So this is actually not an NS. The NS is the exact same thing. We open them up and we break it. Okay, so you see, this. If you had an NS, it would say NS here, and then inside we destroy the circuit for the for the steering wheel controls. It's just a way for us to give you a discount if you're not going to use it. So we make less money, and then you guys save money. Everyone's happy. All right. So what's going to happen here? This goes into here. This goes into here. Okay. You see that? All right. So this is gonna go into the car now. All right. Now we have we don't we have it we have a piece that I don't have in stock right now. I just don't. I gotta make it. That's why. And uh, this customer's in a hurry. I don't want to hold her up anymore. So what happens? It plugs into here. Okay. And it lets you retain your factory aux input in the car. So you can actually it gives you RCA's and plugs into your aftermarket radio to retain the aux. Beautiful. So let me. Um, what am I missing here? I'm missing something. Uh, you know what, while I'm here, let me show you. All right, so if you're doing a navigation radio, uh, this is the, I mean, this is the reverse wire for backup camera. If you're doing a navigation radio, some of them require vehicle speed sense. This reads the canvas, gives you vehicle speed sense. This right here is your parking brake. So our parking brake's a little different. What it does is that it engages the parking brake when you're not, when, it, when the car is not moving. So as soon as you stop the car, it'll tell the radio that you're stopped and it'll let you do whatever you gotta do. So it's, it's a lot better than you know, obviously a lot of you guys are just gonna do bypasses, but whatever. So this goes to here, green to green. Okay, pink is not used in this application. 
purple to purple for the backup camera if you're going to use it. And if not, you just hook it up so it's not dangling. Not a big deal. Uh, on this end, there's going to be a yellow and a black, which is a mute, usually not used. And this is a amplifier turn-on used for um, different cars. Like an Audi's always need this. All right. Let me go get the antenna adapter and I'll be right back. Okay, fellas. So this is a, uh, and ladies, this is an NFIC AAA VW AUD5, the antenna adapter. Um, oh, if you guys have a radio with GPS, I have a GPS antenna adapter. Let's use the factory GPS antenna back here. If you have a radio with Sirius, I also have the adapter that use the factory Sirius antenna that's back here. But right now we're talking AM FM. Both of these that you see on this connector are AM FM. That's a common question I get from people. Um, also, one more thing I gotta tell you. If you look behind this radio, there's constant power, which is yellow, there's ground, and here are all your speakers. See it? All right, so for you guys that don't know, these are all your speakers on, on this end, and then yellow is constant, black is ground, and these two here are data wire. This is how your radio talks to the car. So your radio doesn't turn on like a regular radio with electricity, it turns on my computer signals. Your aftermarket radio cannot read this computer signal, so this is like a little, if you want to call it a translator, it's actually called a can reader, and also has a v, the steering controls built into it. So if you had steering controls, you plug something into here and then into the steering control input of the radio. So. So what this radio gets from the car is canvas wires with two data, which is a twisted pair, and it gives you the constant and the ground. All this, all these wires are done through the uh, computer data canvas system, okay? So purple and white are is the reverse wire to let you know you're in reverse to put a turn on the back of camera. Pink is illumination. Red is the most important one, which is why most people get this. Uh, this is the wire that tells the radio to turn on and off with the key. Without this, you would have to run a wire somewhere else in the car uh, usually the fuse box or ignition or something, okay? Orange is illumination, so when you turn on your headlights, you know how the radio gets dim. That's what that wire does. That's also computer signal. And this is the park and brake output uh, that I explained to you previously, okay? So these these are the wires, which is why you're paying premium over, like if you, what happens a lot of times, you'll buy these radios at other shops and they'll, they'll give you a free harness. The free harness doesn't have any of these wires. So all these wires have to be sourced in the car. Um, this is worth the time if you ask me, but it's up to you. All right, so AAA AUD5 is the antenna adapter for this car. All of them, all models. Uh, so you're gonna have to unplug the connector here. Okay, and then what you're gonna do over here is you see how there's, they're open? You see that? All right, so you see that there's a little locking tab. Can you see it? The little locking tab is gonna face the red wire you're gonna hear it click, and then you're gonna plug it in. Okay? This side goes into the AM and FM. You got, what it is that you got an AM and FM diversity antenna system, and then the, they're in the weird window, I believe, in this car. Yeah, they're in the room. Looks like it, yeah. All right, so, brackets gotta go on. What I always tell people uh, about the brackets, oh, lights down. Now, what I always tell people about the brackets, is get them to the edge of the radio here and then start there. And then once you push it in, you see these are adjustable, so you can move it back and forth to, to have an actual exact measurement of how deep the radio is. A lot of the other kits, when you turn them, they have a slide scale, so you have no exact way of knowing if it's accurate. This is perfectly accurate. All right, so now on the back of the radio, you have the antenna, okay? If you had the aux adapter that, that I said we can make, aux would go into here. Oh, let me turn it back up. Okay. Um, rear camera goes in here. Microphone goes in there. We have a factory microphone for this. It fits in the factory location. Um, it's it's very nice. It slaps right in, and it goes into here. Uh, I don't know what. Oh, WR. That's where the wired remote goes. So if you had signal controls, that's where it would go. All right. So, but for this car, all we got to do, plug this plug and play in here. Okay. Slide everything back in. You could tie these boxes. This box I would tie to the harness. I'm not going to show you that right now. Oh. See back there. All right, yeah, just push your connectors down. Got plenty of room. Boom, bam. All right, now, just to show you how good it is, how good it looks. Oops, messed that up. I'm actually finishing install. So I'm going to try to do this quick. Mm -hmm. 
We went in there, and the little shrimp piece is right here. I like, I don't like cutting my videos up because I, I like people seeing that it is this easy. But sometimes people are like, oh, that's a trick. They tried it eight times. It's not true. All right, so here. <sighs> Looks ugly, right? Very ugly. Let me just get out of focus. Come on, make sure it's good. All right, we have three different trims. We have the basic black, which is what most kits look like. Okay, you see it? Oh, you can't see that one. Autofocus did not be good to us today. What? Come on. Sorry guys, focus didn't work out too well. So we got the basic black, which looks fine. You're not gonna hate on it. Looks okay. I wouldn't like it. We got the matte black, which is, I guess it looks okay because the matte black, I'm pushing the bottom so you can see. The matte black kind of matches with this a little. The bottom, I don't know, still don't like it. And then we have the Enfig car stereo piano black trim. Piano black sounds a lot like shiny black, doesn't it? So I can open the Ziploc bag that is childproof. Ta-da! Ta -da. Now, can someone say OEM finish for me? OEM finish, ladies and gentlemen, OEM, OEM. Uh, look at that. Wait, wait, you mean that radio didn't come with the car? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me, it didn't come with the car? Guys, come on. Beautiful, beautiful kit. It's the RMK7, uh, R no, RMK PB VW07. Uh, if you can want the singleton version, we have it. I just haven't added it to the website because I, I just, I don't know. Um, but, yeah, I mean, you could tell this is a little duller, but it looks like it's the same exact finish to me. Looks beautiful. Let me put it on the lights so you can see more. Actually, I'll just bring the ISO up so you can see. That yeah, doesn't make it look better, necessarily. I know the light's causing some problems there. What if we bring the light down a little? But, yeah, I'm trying to see, give you the best... Anyway, you can see it looks perfect. I'll take a picture of it. Uh, videos brought to you by nfitcarstereo.com. We sell and install. We also ship worldwide. Um, we have we do dealer accounts. Uh, our worldwide shipping currently is super fast and super cheap. We have a great deal with the company. Um, you know, as long as it lasts, we will keep shipping. Uh, we always ship international. Um, shops, wholesale accounts, uh, lifetime tech support. Uh, look at our reviews. I mean, we just... We like this. We want you guys to be happy. We want to give out a good product. So that's pretty much what we're all about. Enfitcarstereo.com. Thank you for watching. My name is Christian. If you have any questions, feel free to give me a call. Thanks for watching. Hey, guys. Here I was putting the car back to stock. I completely forgot. I never turned on the radio. <laughs> all right. So, so we turn on the radio. It comes back on. Now, this has RAP, which is retain accessory position. What that means is that when you turn off the car, you do not have to, you don't, you don't have to, um, the, the car, the radio stays on until you pull out the key. Why is this important? Um, a lot of shops that are out there, just look at the lighting, uh, what they'll do is that they won't use a kit, they'll go right to the fuse box or something. So what happens if you're sitting there parked waiting for someone to listen to the radio, you're going to have to have your car on to have everything on. Like, if you run into the fuse box, there's no, I don't think that, on Volkswagen, there's no fuse that says, you know, stay on with the key. I think you have to go all the way into the key cylinder. Um, I don't know, because we always use these. But, yeah, so, retain accessory position, you turn off the car, the entire car is off except for the radio, and then when you pull out the key, the radio turns off. All right? Enfitcarstereo.com, thanks for watching. Almost forgot to post that.